Okay, here we are with another practical is tactical video. Happy Tuesday. If it's not Tuesday when you're watching this, happy whatever day it is. Um, a few of you have asked about our custom she portraits and the she series that I've been doing. And the truth is, I love the she portrait maybe more than anything I ever have that I've done because I feel like they speak so much life to me as a woman and hopefully to you guys as women. But um, some of you have asked about how to draw, um, uh, how to get the lines of a face correct. And if you haven't seen our she portraits, most of them are like this, but front facing with no, um, no face features, really just a simple face. And then some of them have words on the front of the face and some of them have words in the background but you can check out our instagram feed and on our website to see those but i wanted to walk you through just a quick um, some tips on how to make a she portrait a simple way to do it is to do this sort of like back facing portrait where you don't see any details of the face and i um, sketched a few samples for you to kind of talk you through this and then i'll add another so you can see but if um <clears throat> if the front of a face shape um, stresses you out or you think uh, I'm not sure if I could do that I love this idea of just kind of looking at the back of a woman and so you can do that you want to start that by um, you know I always kind of start with the neck and you really won't see all of the neck these lines that I'm drawing now will probably be covered up if I'm choosing to do a long-haired version of a portrait but start with the neck and then these shoulder lines are going to come down gradually you know when you're looking at the back of a person you're seeing these shoulder lines are going to come down at a gradual angle and um, you want these to be the same size left to right so a trick that I learned in school is kind of using this pencil as a guide to sort of measure so take the tip of your pencil on this side and then use your finger as a marker here and and mark to where the neck, the edge of the neck is. And this should be about the same on both sides, from here to here, and from here to here. And so what you're seeing here is these do match, and, and sometimes one side will be longer than the other. So once you check to make sure they're the same, if they're not the same, you can adjust that there. So then you wanna have this neck piece, and I would say the easier version of the two is sort of doing this long-haired, swept hair look, or um, it could be coming down straight in the back, but I oftentimes would sketch a head as well, just to make sure that um, my head isn't extra large, um, but I would, I'm gonna erase these lines. So um, you might see this part line on the top just slightly. I'm gonna do an off-center part, and then just sort of follow where you think the hair would go, and you could swoop it to one side, and remember it's gonna get smaller as you get down here like this and then you could choose a braid maybe that's coming over um, braids are tricky if I'm ever drawing a braid I always kind of look at a picture of what a braid actually looks like because although I know how to braid I can't really draw one without um, practicing <clears throat> the easy thing about this way is that you don't have to draw any ears you don't have to draw really any lines of the face but you're still coming up with a a beautiful image of a woman um, you know as well so this would be a fun way to do it and you could give her curly hair you could come back with curly hair here and add in some color go all the way down here um, now I'm going to switch to showing you and give you a little more tactical tips on doing a front facing one which is what you see mostly um, <clears throat> I'm gonna do it larger so that I can transfer onto my picture okay so when you're doing this same thing um, if you want to fill the whole page start maybe um, one third of the way down with this neckline okay and like I said you're not probably gonna see this but you know you can see that I'm centering these neck these two sides of the neck um, left to right and then I'm gonna come down with this same slanted shoulder line and sometimes you know you're going to see shoulders that are more um, like this not as slanted but for the most part um, these shoulders are going to be a gradually slanted down and um, you know if you're not sure it's great to just hop online and find an image of a bust of a woman or um, be careful with that one but you know <laughs> um, an image of just like you know 
the top of a woman's shoulders or something. Okay, so once you have your shoulders drawn, um, this is sort of curving down where the shoulder is coming down. And then same thing on this side. These are very soft lines, so they don't have to be perfect. If you wanted to cut it off here and not do the curve of the shoulder, you could do that and sort of do like a soft, um, where you would come and end with the image watercolor or whatever medium you're using but I'm gonna come down to the shoulders so this is sort of a soft kind of curve here with these slanted lines and then necklines in the middle now I would say the harder part is the face shape and there's so many different face shapes but um, what you want to keep in mind is that this chin is gonna kind of fall in the middle you know from left to right and I'm just gonna go with like a soft basic oval shape and so if you start on the bottom and sort of come up you know it's not it's almost it's not it's kind of like an upside down egg you know it's not going to be this same curve here is not going to be the same up here okay because that looks kind of clowny i'm showing you what it's not so what you are going to do is bring these lines out a little bit farther Okay, and then I'm going to erase these lines so as not to confuse anyone. And then, you know, this is kind of coming into focus, but you know what I'm noticing here is that I think my neck is a little bit too big, and this is what how it's going to show, like, sort of how your person is looking, if whether they're looking up or looking down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these in a little bit because I feel like my neck is too wide for the face that I was creating as far as shape so those are things to adjust once you kind of get started on it if it looks like your neck is too wide for your face your options are making your face a little larger or bringing in those necklines a little bit left to right and so that's what I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna come back here and erase this and then um, I'm thinking about the side of the forehead here that kind of comes in. And then you have this cheekbone that oftentimes you see that kind of comes right here. And then the ears usually sit, in this case, it's about an inch above. Now, depending on, you know, these ears are not in the center. The eyes sit in the center of your head. Okay, we're not drawing the eyes, but this top to bottom is about the center. <clears throat> and then the ears sit under there so that is a good um, marking point to give yourself now I'm only drawing a little bit of these ears because ears are a bit complicated so I'm gonna tell myself I'm gonna draw hair here to cover the ears but I'm not gonna do that yet I'm gonna come back to these cheekbones and this side of the forehead you know the side of the head is usually kind of straight and then the cheekbone usually bumps out a little bit and then if you were trying to you know, match a certain face, the things that you would wanna pay attention to are some people have a more pointed chin. So you could come down with like a stronger angle here, a more pointed chin, or if you had a more square face, these lines down here would come out a little bit farther, which I'm not gonna do. But those are the things to keep in mind if you're working from a photo of someone or maybe yourself. Um, where do these cheekbones come down? How pointy is the chin on the bottom? And then this cheekbone along with the side of the forehead. And then so when you're drawing your hair, you know, this hair is not going to stop. It's not going to start at the top of this head. Um, it's going to start at the hairline, you know, which is going to be about here. You know, sketch these lines. This is a rough. We're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to do a transfer. But um, if your hair is starting at the very top of your head, it's going to look kind of weird. So, you know, bring down this hairline and decide um, what kind of hair do I want this gal to have. I'm going to do a side part. Um, you could do bangs if you wanted to. If you wanted to do bangs, you would use this eye line as sort of a guide and sort of come in here with a guideline and then bring it up to perhaps the point at the top of your head if you were doing like thick Zoe Deschanel style bangs. Um, but I'm not gonna do bangs. So I'm gonna erase that real quick. 
But once you have your hairline, you could decide if this is the center part, are you gonna see a widow's peak here? You might see that. Um, I'm gonna do a side part, kind of, of swooping down, okay? So I'm deciding to make this point of, you know, where the part's gonna be. And this is the top of the head, but your hair might come up a little bit farther, you know, if it's got a little bit of body in it. And maybe you would see this part up here as well. Coming down, I'm covering up this side of the forehead. Don't be afraid to cover up lines you've already drawn. Um, it will just ensure that your picture is, is accurate. Okay, so I don't know what kind of hairstyle I'm doing here. Her hair is a little more straight than some of the others that I've done. So here I finished her hair, and with these portraits, I like to do um, one side of the hair in front and the other side behind. I think it gives a little bit of dimension. And then these parts that are behind the neck and even this part in here is going to be in the shadows when it comes to coloring it. So that will give it, um, it'll just kind of give your picture some detail as far as the hair style. So this is my very rough image of the portrait itself and now I'm going to speed it up and I'm going to do a quick graphite transfer. This is a really simple way to keep what you have and transfer onto your your final page and the good thing about that is I'm going to be working in watercolor. So with watercolor you don't want all these dark lines because it won't cover up. It'll be kind of messy so a graphite transfer is a quick trick in, in order to get the image just how you had it and have your lines light. So here I go with that. Okay, so here is my quick um, graphite transfer finished. Um, and you can probably barely see these lines, which is good. Um, I only sketched over the most important lines in my picture because like I said, you don't want a lot of dark lines on something that you're gonna watercolor over. So I did these main lines of the outside of the hair. I didn't shade inside here. Um, and there might be some things that you missed or that you need to make another note of very lightly. I forgot to do this ear right here, so I'm gonna fill that in. And then any lines that you see have transferred darker than maybe you want, um, go ahead and lightly erase. And you wanna just see a tiny bit of it, and you can still kind of follow that line. If you weren't using watercolor, if you were using colored pencil, or if you're using marker or something like that, it's not as important to have these light lines, but if you are, it's good to have them really light because it'll give you a better product as you finish. So. I'm using my favorite, very affordable watercolor palette. Um, you can get these in our Scripture Doodle watercolor packs. Um, you can also find them at your local art store. I love this palette because it has all these cakes. And this is my go-to skin color if I'm doing just a Caucasian face, if I'm doing a darker face, I'm gonna mix this and this medium brown. And um, depending on ethnicity, I might make it lighter and mixed with white or have some of this like goldenrod color that is um, for your choice. So I'm gonna mix some of this yellow here with this skin color. And you know, when I'm mixing, I like to have a scrap paper to tell myself kind of what color I'm getting here. Because uh, once you lay it down, it's not always easy to come up. And you're just gonna follow the lines that you already have. And um, I have I need to do a watercolor tutorial on this because I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it. But I'm going to follow these lines that I already have, filling in the face, and then blending it in, making a highlight maybe in the center. And um, this is not watercolor paper, this is Bristol paper, so it will warp a little bit. Um, but it's just what I had to use. Um, it's what I had in my studio that I grabbed. Watercolor paper is good, Bristol paper is okay as well. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up and then I will talk to you a little bit about composition as I finish.
Okay, so here's my simple, quick, finished version of this she portrait, and I'm gonna come back and add some <clears throat> words of life on her face once it dries. But you know what I love about these is you can get fun and kind of crazy, and I went a little wild with this one because it was just for fun. But you know, I added this sort of pink blush, and then I kind of reflected that down here. What you wanna think about is kind of where the shadows hit, which would be, you know, where there is shadow, this hair is coming around here, so you might see a shadow on this side of the face. And you'll always see a little bit of shadow behind the hair here, and then maybe up here on the foreheads, and then um, some color, maybe a rouge of some sort on the cheeks. Now, if I was gonna do this again, I might not start with such a, a yellow tone on her skin, but <clears throat> that's kinda how I went with it, so. I just kind of, I just kind of kept going. Um, I think I had a little bit of pencil shavings in my picture, so you know, make sure that you have a clean, full surface um, before you begin your your color medium. Anyway, I hope this was fun. I hope you'll give it a try and tag us at Scripture Doodle um, on your pictures so we can share them and um, and just cheer you on. So, have a great Tuesday. We'll see you next week. Thank you.